Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner Classic Lesson Noon Classics. This is episode number 2086, Double Shot 1980. The two trades I got here, one is from Valiant, the other, of course, is from Dynamite. First, we have Exo Man of War, Volume 4 at War with Unity. Yeah, this is basically. The whole thing with these issues, by the way, this collect issues 1922 of X-Men Award Volume 3, that this is basically his account with Unity. That's simple what these issues are. And also him briefly surrendering. And of course, Visigoths also being sort of in prison. And apparently history has forgot about the Visigoths, which seems quite strange and kind of dumb. I'm not sure why Venditti wrote that way for, but he did. And at one point, Livewire herself gets a chance to be the brief host to the X-Men of War suit. Though, if you're curious though, Ark does get it back, and Unity is comprised at this point I'm just of the Eternal Warrior, Ninjack, Livewire, and I think that's it. We do have Harada here too, who is like the main villain of the Harrow series. Yeah, and by the way, the subject you have Robin Diddy doing the, the writing. The artwork for the first couple issues is done by Corey Nord. Though he co-does the artwork, he mostly does all the artwork here. He does, he does the artwork for issues issue 19 by himself. And uh, he does start doing the layouts with, uh, he does layouts for issue 20 with uh, finishes done by Vinity Codus, uh, Cuffus. And 21's got three artists on it. Vinici, uh, Vinity Cavus. Trevor Hessen, Corey Nord. Corey Nord does do basically 22 as well with, of course, Vincent on the um, finishes. This cover is Clayton Crane's artwork, which always great to see this guy's artwork. I love, I've been a big fan of his artwork for years. Yep. But yeah, that's simply put what these issues are. It basically is a little bit political stuff and something unexpected. The arc himself would later join Unity, and Unity would last a whopping 25 issues. Yes, and fun fact, written by the same guy who wrote Ninjak's solo book, Matt Knott. Yep, I might review of Unity in the future. Now, in case you're curious, still about the name Unity itself. By the way, I give this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, Unity, the group itself is named after the classic volume event that came back in the early 1990s, which was a series of one-shots that basically crossed over with the Valiant Universe. It is one of three crossovers they ever did, the next one they did was the one that pretty much nearly killed the company, Death Might. They did do one or one afterwards, but that was simply it. But they only did like two or three company by crossovers at that point in time. Uh, nowadays, they do once every few years. They don't do it as often as like Marvel DC do, but they do have events. Stuff like Armor Wars 1 and 2, Divinity 3, which was really good, The Valiant. Some pretty good stuff here by crossovers. But in the case of this, this is still pretty good. Yep. By the way, this leads into Armor Wars 1. The next story arc does. Yep. Next up we have is Vampirella vs. Dracula. And the writer of this book is, of course, Joe Harris. A guy who wrote all... But what I can tell about Joe Harris, he writes a lot of the Vampire books for Dynamite. Uh, these issues came out roughly back in 2012, so we have a 10 year old trade here. With the artwork done by Ivan Rodriguez. Uh, mostly put in the case of these issues, it's Vampirella fighting Dracula in the pages of his own book. So it's a crossover with the Dracula novel. That's mostly put kind of what this is. <clears throat> one of a few times Vampirella has counted Dracula, and at one point she actually married him recently. Christopher Reese wrote the series. Yeah, and I chose to do this one after Valiant because, well, I love Vampirella, great character. The only problem is when I try to use uh, an image of her from our, for a thumbnail, you to project it due to near nudity. I'm like, it's Vampirella. She's always dressed this way. Most of them, anyways. And, and it's few points. She actually gets a chance to encounter Dracula's brides. And she gets bitten by one. And it seems like the Joe Harris forgets the fact she's also a vampire too. Though she's an alien vampire. And here's the thing. The book barely brings the fact that she's an alien vampire. It's like she's powerful, yes. 
But it's almost like the writer himself writes it where nobody in the book knows she's a freaking alien. Because that's like a vampirella. She is an alien. She's an alien vampire. And her whole planet, basically, her whole, like, like the, the oceans are covered in, are basically dripped in blood. It's called the ocean of blood on the planet. Yes. And pretty much in the way, she's like, and, you know, and here's the thing about her, if you do not know about Vampirella, she's actually one of those few vampires who actually walk in sunlight, zero problem. Yep. But sexy Vampirella. Always good to see her. Uh, the story itself is perfectly, it's actually a pretty good story. But yeah, damn good book. I enjoyed it. Okay, so that's subject of you. Uh, next up is going to be the newest episode of One Piece. I'm going to do that next, and I might end up basically doing the rest of my anime tomorrow at this point in time. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And basically, <clears throat> yep, that's what it looks like right now, okay? Bye.